In the last lesson, we left the aircraft in cruise. In this lesson, the flight continues from top of descent through to approach and landing. Before you begin, let's review the status of the AFS. You're cruising at flight level 310. Looking at the FMA, you can see that the ATS active mode is MAC. The APFD active modes are altitude and heading selection. The flight directors are engaged and AP1 is engaged in command. You now receive clearance for an initial descent to flight level 40. Your first action is to set this cleared altitude on the FCU. It is recommended that level change is used for any altitude changes. The only exception is for altitude changes of less than 2,000 feet or if ATC requests a specific vertical speed. In these cases, use vertical speed mode. Enter the new altitude of flight level 40. Next, you should start the descent, and you can do this by pulling the altitude selector knob or pressing level change. Select Level Change to start the descent. The aircraft starts the descent. Now you must check the FMA. First, look at Column 1. The ATS Retard mode commands the throttles to travel back to the idle position. Retard only engages if the autothrust function is active. There are three conditions under which retard automatically engages. When level change is engaged in descent, at 30 feet radio altitude with speed mode active, when profile mode is engaged in the descent phase. We'll be looking at profile mode in the FMS chapter. You should remember that if retard is engaged by level change, you can manually stop throttle movement to achieve your required thrust. You can stop them on any intermediate position. Retard mode automatically disengages under three conditions. One, when in descent, with level change engaged, you manually stop throttle movement. Two, again, when in descent, with level change engaged, throttle movement is stopped automatically on idle. Or three, whenever the autothrust function disengages. Let's continue with the flight. Check the FMA again. When the throttles have reached idle, autothrust disengagement is displayed on the FMA. The APFD engaged modes are MAC and heading selection. Altitude mode is armed and ready to acquire and maintain flight level 40. During descent, ATC requests you to maintain 280 knots, so you need to pre-select this new speed. With modification 11900, if the aircraft experiences a high acceleration while the AP is active in level change mode, the AP prevents the aircraft from overshooting VMO, MMO or VMAX too significantly. The overshoot should be limited to VMAX plus four knots, corresponding to the overspeed warning. Engage the preset function. Pressing the speed max setting knob activates the preset function. Now change the speed max display from Mac to speed. You need to select the speed max select pressing the speed Finally, you need to rotate the speed max setting knob to enter 280 knots. When we reach 280 knots, 
the preset speed is automatically acquired and maintained. Now check the FMA. As you can see in column 2, line 1, MAC has been replaced by speed. You will recall from the climb that this happens automatically at the MAC indicated airspeed transition altitude. You are descending to flight level 100 and as you know you should reduce speed to 250 knots. Now enter the new speed of 250 knots. As the aircraft continues the descent towards flight level 40, you should monitor the FMA. As you can see from the FMA, flight level 40 is being captured as altitude acquire is displayed in column 2. As soon as you reach flight level 40, altitude hold automatically engages, as you can see on the FCU, and altitude is displayed on the FMA. You are now cleared for an ILS approach from 3,000 feet. First, you need to enter 3,000 feet on the FCU. We are cleared to descend to 3,000 feet to intercept the ILS. In this example, a new vertical speed of 1,000 feet per minute is sufficient for your descent to the ILS approach altitude. To enter the new vertical speed, pull and then rotate the knob to enter minus 10. The AP acquires and maintains the new vertical speed. Now check the FMA for vertical speed mode engagement. The FMA also tells you that the ATS remains in speed mode and altitude is again armed, ready to acquire 3,000 feet. Remember, when using vertical speed mode, priority is given to vertical speed and not speed. This speed protection means that if your vertical speed is not compatible with the selected speed, speed increases towards Vmax, and the APFD mode automatically reverts to level change with the selected speed as the reference. This speed protection and mode reversion works equally with a positive vertical speed. On reaching VLS plus 5 knots, the APFD will again automatically revert to level change mode. Select the modification 1 with modification 11900, the reversion is no longer available. If vertical speed is not compatible with the selected speed, and the speed increases to Vmax, the AP will pitch the aircraft up in order to prevent Vmax overshoot while keeping the vertical speed mode active. Look at the FMA. As the aircraft approaches altitude capture at 3,000 feet, altitude acquire replaces vertical speed. And on reaching the required altitude, altitude replaces altitude acquire. One last thing before you begin the ILS approach. You should select the appropriate speed on the FCU to allow for slats extension. To prepare for the ILS approach, you must first check the autothrust function is active. The next task is to set an appropriate heading on the FCU to intercept the localizer. The ILS has been set up for you earlier. Now you need to arm land mode. Do this now. With land mode armed, you must check that localizer and glide slope modes are armed and displayed on the FMA.
At this point, the aircraft's landing capability is also displayed on the FMA, as you can see here, Category 2. Remember, this is only the technical capability of the aircraft. It does not give you the authority to carry out a Category 2 approach. Land mode must always be engaged before localizer intercept. However, engaging land mode too early may result in the capture of a false localizer. Remember, land mode can only engage if radio altitude height is above 400 feet, the ILS frequency and runway course have been selected, and go-around mode is not engaged. One more point before you continue. The localizer mode works in the same way as the localizer element of land mode. However, you should only use localizer mode when there is a poor quality ILS or if the glide beam is missing. If you look at the PFD, you can see the ILS warning message. It tells you that you have armed but have missed setting the VOR NAV ILS switch to ILS. Setting this switch to ILS allows you to monitor the final approach. So move the VOR NAV ILS switch to the ILS position. Remember, land mode captures and maintains all ILS beams. It then guides the aircraft during flare and on the runway center line. At this point in the approach, you can engage the second autopilot. Do this now. The APFD begins localizer acquire at about two dots from the localizer axis. If you look at the FMA, you can see that localizer acquire has engaged and has replaced heading selection as the engaged lateral mode. During the localizer capture, you need to enter your runway heading. Your runway heading is 320 degrees. Select the control to enter the runway heading. Now the FMA must be monitored closely for glide slope capture. The speed has now been reduced to S speed. You can capture the glide slope. Now localizer is being tracked, the APFD captures the glide slope, as you can see on the FMA. Check the FMA. You can see that glide slope is now displayed, telling you that the glide slope has been captured and is being tracked. Once the glide slope has been intercepted, you should set the go-around altitude on the FCU. The go-around altitude is 4,000 feet. Enter this now. During the final deceleration sequence, speed must be gradually reduced to allow for the setting of the aircraft's landing configuration. Your approach speed is 154 knots. Enter the approach speed. At this point, the landing gear must be extended. Before carrying on with the descent, 
Let's briefly look at the action required in case of go around. If a go around is necessary, action on either go lever automatically engages the AP in go around mode. Altitude is armed as indicated on the FMA and ATS engages in thrust mode. Go around mode is disengaged by selecting another mode. In this example, heading selection has been engaged. On go around disengagement, thrust remains the engaged ATS mode. SRS and heading selection are the engaged APFD modes and the second AP automatically disconnects as indicated on the FMA. Select the modification 11. The go around SRS modes guide the aircraft in pitch so as to maintain a target speed defined by the speed reference system. If the speed drops too significantly, typically VLS minus five knots for any reason, the AP will pitch the aircraft down so as to fly level, but it will not allow the aircraft to descend to maintain the speed. Hence the speed may exceptionally decrease more until the AP disconnects, typically VLS minus 10 knots. Now let's return to the point where we left the descent. At 400 feet, land mode automatically engages. The FMA must be constantly and closely monitored. For safety reasons, action on the FCU is now restricted to second AP engagement if it is not already engaged. Passing through 50 feet radio altitude, the flare phase of the descent is displayed on the FMA and replaces land. Flare remains displayed until touchdown. At about 30 feet above runway, Retard mode is engaged as power is reduced and the aircraft is aligned with the runway. On touchdown, rollout mode is engaged and displayed on the FMA, replacing flare. Manual thrust is now displayed as retard and auto thrust are automatically disengaged on touchdown you have control of the throttles again. Remember that if flying a final approach manually with no AP engaged, at 30 feet radio altitude, the yaw bar replaces the FD bars. Finally, if using the AP, disconnect it using the autopilot disconnect push button. This completes the third lesson on AFS normal operations.